Rise, Fall, Acquittal, Redemption. The life of Maryland political icon Marvin Mandel. The man with a trademark pipe whose accomplishments were overshadowed by a 1975 indictment on federal charges of mail fraud and racketeering. And I think the future will show that uh, during my administration, nothing was ever done to defraud the public of the state of Maryland. Federal prosecutors claim the owners of the old Marlboro racetrack in Prince George's County gave Mandel more than $350,000 in cash, favors, and gifts. And in exchange, Mandel was to push through legislation that would benefit the track owners and help them acquire other tracks. During the legal ordeal, Mandel suffered symptoms of a stroke and was placed under a doctor's care. He was tried twice. The first trial was dismissed because of allegations of jury tampering. Mandel handled it with humor. If I thought that the government was going to end up spending $5 million to find out about those gifts, I'd have taken the $5 million and given them the gifts. <laughs> the second time around, a jury found Mandel guilty. He served 19 months of a four-year sentence. President Ronald Reagan commuted the sentence in 1981. Six years later, a federal court overturned Mandel's conviction on the grounds the law, as written, did not apply to the conduct for which Mandel was prosecuted. The judge wrote, quote, a final answer to the question of Mandel's guilt or innocence must await the judgment of history, end quote, quote. A history that began in Baltimore on April 19, 1920. Mandel attended public schools, graduated from Baltimore City College in 1937. He received a law degree from the University of Maryland in 1942. That same year, Mandel enlisted in the Army and served as an instructor at Aberdeen Proving Ground and at Texarkana, Texas. Following an honorable discharge in 1944, he began practicing law in Baltimore City. The city's Democratic political machine helped Mandel get appointed to a vacant seat in the Maryland House of Delegates in 1952. He served four terms and became House Speaker in 1963. Mandel's political savvy, popularity among legislative peers, and luck propelled him to the governor's office. When Governor Spiro Agnew resigned in 1969 to become Richard Nixon's vice president, the Maryland General Assembly appointed Mandel to serve the rest of Agnew's term. Voters kept Mandel on the governor's seat for eight years, and under his tenure, Mandel created 12 executive departments. He established an agency to manage public transportation and to develop subway systems for Baltimore and the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. Mandel reorganized the state's courts, created a system of public defenders, and created a public school construction program. After his conviction was overturned, Mandel was reinstated as a member of the Maryland Bar in good standing. He practiced law in Annapolis. Former Governor Bob Ehrlich asked him to chair a task force to streamline state government. In 2003, Ehrlich appointed Mandel to the University of Maryland System Board of Regents. But he got into hot water in March of 06 because he registered as a lobbyist for the alcohol industry and an insurance group. State law prohibits regents from lobbying. Mandel's personal life while governor turned into a national soap opera. His wife of 32 years, Barbara, also known as Bootsy, kicked him out of the governor's mansion in 1974. The couple had two children. Their separation was announced through a press release. Mandel pronounced his love for this woman, Jean Dorsey, 17 years his junior. He declared he intended to get a divorce and marry her. Three years later, his ex-wife Bootsy still respected the politician. I still think he remained honest. I do think he's an honorable man as far as public office is concerned. Mandel's marriage to Jean lasted 27 years. She died in 2001. Even in his 80s, Mandel continued to practice law in Annapolis and kept his seat on the Board of Regents. He remained a behind-the-scenes force in politics and may be considered by some as the architect of modern state government. David Collins, WBAL-TV 11 News.